You are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creative. We are here. She was told that she couldn't play with the boys. She was told that they were too big, too rough, too strong. She was told to give up her dreams and move on. She was told to just be pretty, be quiet, be a lady. She was told that women had to stay on their side of the court. Stay in your lane. Playing and competing with men was insane. She was told that men and women would never be equal. Dreaming like that would only be linked to your mind and your soul. She never listened. She knew that their thinking was old. She is magic. She is the definition of spirit. She is what champions are made of. She is that checkup from the neck up, helping you to build your financial house. And of course, we're here at Resurgence 2022, and it's still time, because it's up till five o'clock. You still have time to register and come. But again, I told you there's a lot of movers and shakers here today, and we have one that is, I, I passed a mover shaker. I don't know what you call the next level. I have Dr. George Frazier. And I mean, this is truly on. Wow. I have followed you years and years, yeah. you know, and you spoke last night about uh, Dr. Clark. You, talk, you know, you, last night you just blew us out of the water. You said you were going to drop some gems. Right. You didn't drop gems. You <laughs> dropped bombs. <laughs> and and there are so many things that you had to share. But what does this resurgence 2022 mean to you? Oh, I love the word. It's a powerful word. And... It, it means to not only lift up, but to move forward with aggression, with empathy, sympathy, with leadership, um, and for the best of us to bubble up to the top and, and research. Because as, as you heard me say last night, no one's saving black people but black people. It's been 400 years and we ain't saved. So what are we waiting for? We're waiting for ourselves. Right, and President Obama said that in his 2016 campaign. Right, we are the ones we are waiting for, and the beauty is that we have it like that. We can do it. We just need unity. We need a sense of community. Yes. We need intellectual curiosity mm -hmm. that becomes the foundation of critical thinking. And so we need more critical thinkers um, who are displaying the kind of leadership that move a community and move a people forward. If a community is not moving forward, it is moving backwards. And if it's moving backwards, the old saying is, if the fish stink, look to the head. It's leadership. Yes. Leadership, leadership. Where are the Dr. Kings today? Yes, where, where are, are the Stokely Carmichael Malcolm you mentioned X. last last night? You know, I thought about it. It hit my heart. Yes, where's the Malcolm X's? But also, they're there. But it's it's a different world today. You know, um, I had the honor uh, last year to go to Tulsa for the 100th anniversary, and I got an award for being the uh, Wall Street pioneer, because I'm the first African-American woman to trade on Wall Street as a full-service broker. Fantastic. But 
It's got to go further than that. When I saw those 600 businesses that were destroyed there and the fact that our money doesn't move out of, it didn't move out of the, out of the uh, community for three to five years, whereas today, it's lucky if it lasts four minutes. Oh, yeah. And we and think about it. We're a $1.7 trillion annual economy. If black people in America were a nation, we would be the 16th richest nation yes. in the entire world. Our money goes Spain. in one direction, away from us. And with some of America, right? Um, we are the consumption class, yes. black people in America, and white folks are the merchant class. They make stuff. We buy stuff. As I like to say, the goal is to win, not to look like you're winning. I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in it. You ain't winning. You just look like you're winning. Who's winning? Louis Vuitton, Nike, Dior, uh, Gucci. Ferragamo. Yeah, and we're not getting anywhere. We have nothing. As a matter of fact, I believe in if I'm going to have a name on something, it better be mine. That's right. But I have a question for you, which came up last night. That's why I wanted to talk to you. We're in a society right now where they're teaching us to be kumbaya. Everything is wonderful. You know, we don't need to bring forth what happened in the past. We don't need, this is what I'm hearing from my young folks, my children's children's, you know, it's that. It's, I hear it too. Yeah, you know, and it's like, uh, we, in my opinion, we have not gotten to the stage of where we can be so kumbaya. We haven't gotten there yet. You know, everybody else has risen and we're still hanging in the background. What do we do when someone says, especially when they say they want to write a paragraph to write us out of the slavery, out of his, what do we do? How do we rectify this? Because we're at that stage, our children are saying, well, that was then, you know, my, my husband looks a different culture, you know, that's how they, they talk. And, you know, it's not about who you love, it's just the fact that you love, you know? Right. And so I'm listening to this and we're in a stage, I remember, just to add to where I'm feeling, I remember David Frost and it was Diane Carroll and David Frost loved her. But his mother married that you will lose everything that you have because this money has to stay in our in our family. That was powerful. Oh, yeah. So what you're selling the truth, <laughs> right? No, no question about that. Dr. John Henry Clark spoke to this idea that a man without the knowledge or a woman, without the knowledge of their history, is like a tree without roots. We don't really know who we are. We all only know who we are. And that's why they did what they did. That we are the children, as I said last night, we are the children of the slaves that would not die. That we have the genetic encoding of the great kings and queens of Africa, that we were building pyramids and solving complex engineering problems when other cultures were living in caves, practicing cannibalism. Mm -hmm. And in spite of the fact that America kept its foot on our throat for 400 years, we overcame that. We've risen. We've risen like the phoenix. So if everything happens for a reason and serves us in some special way, then you will never understand that reason looking forward. You will only understand it looking backwards. Mm -hmm. The deeper question here is, maybe we were not brought here. Maybe we were sent here. Do you believe that God would put his weakest people here to do his stuff? No. How could an America who could morally, spiritually, and biblically justify the kidnapping, raping, and pillaging of another people? Well, actually, another two people, natives already. Yes, America, they did, did too. And Africans brought to America. Mm -hmm. Have any moral or spiritual grounding? And perhaps had God not sent Africans here? Mm hmm. 
America might have self-destructed by now, hmm. right? So it's another way to look at it. God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. And if you can metaphorically think of us being sentient instead of brought here, mm. it is a reflection of the true power that we have and has been demonstrated time and time again from God's first people. You see, you see we were God's first people. People, the first human remains, humans as we know them, were born in the old divine gorge in Ethiopia. Yes. Yeah, Ethiopia, uh, those folks are blue black. That's right. Right? So God made us first. We built the first great civilizations of humankind, much of what? Eurocentric people, in terms of their thoughts and ideas and their religion, they stole, in a sense, mm -hmm. modeled, if you want to make it gentle, uh, from the literature and the writing and the medicine and the engineering that we were doing before, before they came out of the caves. Beginning, the beginning of civilization. Right? So why wouldn't a mm. young person want to know that mm -hmm. and to subconsciously feel his or her own power. If we knew that, internalize that, there would be no way that we would tolerate what we have received in this country. We have been stereotyped to death. Definitely. The only thing that a black person can do with excellence is sing and dance, play football, baseball, or basketball. Well, that's not true. It's so not true. <laughs> right? As I said, we were building pyramids and solving complex engineering problems when you were in caves. Come on. Right? So it is very important. And I, I hear the same thing you hear from young people. Forget about that. Why are you always talking about that? Why do you always bring that up? Because it is at the root of our problem, our lack of wokeness and consciousness, our lack of knowledge of self, the lack of understanding the internal power, the spiritual power, the moral power in us first. We should envelop that and we should use that to press forward. Okay, so we've got to find a way to, well, my whole feeling was we're going to have to have lobotomies take place. <laughs> you know, we've got to clean our minds of all these lies that we've been told and that we've accepted. Because when I made my first trip, by the way, I made my first trip to Egypt. I, that was my gift after undergrad. And I went with Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, and Dr. Jeffries. So they were my, wow. yeah, that was during the time. Why the trio? It was. And we, we had was where Dr. Ben had created our learning material. So coming out of undergrad, I was enthused with all the things, yeah. even with Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, you know, and today. Where are those people today? They're all but gone. See, so I now I know and I fully understand, and mm -hmm. you are a living testimony of what I just said. You were surrounded by and immersed in from geniuses who understood it, who could interpret Sheikh Anti Dia, mm -hmm. who could interpret um, Chancellor Williams, yes. uh, the destruction of black civilization. And they poured that into you and thus empowered you. Yes. Right? So, but but much of that is gone. We How don't do get we it get in it school. Back? We don't get it at home. No. How do we get it back? Right. What do we do? We, I know you have a conference coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, will, you certainly get it. Out. Ours is an African-centered conference. Mm -hmm. Right? It's in its 22nd year. Forbes magazine named the Power Networking Conference top five conferences in America not to be missed. Not one of the top five black conferences, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. One of the top five of every conference put on in this country. And there we indoctrinated, if you will, gentle word, instilled, okay. if you will, the whole notion of who we are. 
we have presentations by Dr. Kwa David Whitaker, an installed chief in the village of Atonqua in Elmina, a PhD and a practicing lawyer who now lives in Ghana with a dual citizen, United States citizenship uh, yes. and a Ghanaian citizenship. Yes. We have Tony Browder and we take regular trips with Anthony Browder to Egypt. He is the only black man in the history of the world to have his own dig in uh, Cairo. Right? Right. So, but all of this is part of reorienting our people. What we're going to start at the Power Networking Conference next year mm -hmm. is a National Rites of Passage program. You see, we do not have a rights of young people mm -hmm. and adult males and females. I went through one myself. I did 40 too. years ago. I did too right. when I was in my 20s, definitely. So, so that's 40 years also. There you go, there you go. <laughs> so you ask, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things we can do. Okay. Right? We're not gonna change urban school history books. They don't cover this. No. No? At best they cover a modern black history, let's call it the last 400 years since slavery, mm -hmm. but it's much deeper and longer than that. So where are we going to have to get this? We're going to have to get this from home, yeah. right? And it, the responsibility will fall on the parents. Now, the problem with that is what you articulated earlier, the succeeding generations, X, Y, Z, and Generation Alpha are not learning it. Now, my two sons mm -hmm. learned it from me. Of course. Right? They're not going to even get it in church. Right? Mm. So one of the places we need to install rites of passage programs with the spiritual base is in our churches. Mm. There are okay. 85,000 black churches in America. Right? About 10% of them are now focused on economic development, wealth creation, and financial literacy. That's a good, big step in the right direction. Okay. And they should. The next big thing, next generations, must be a national rites of passage program. So, because that's where we go now. We do go to church. We go and, to church. And so if that's not instilled in us by the most powerful institution historically in black culture in America, um, uh, we're, gonna have a, we're gonna have a continuing problem. And it's well, already succeeding to get worse. I have this thing then, and, and again with the churches, with the churches, it's something that Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark used to talk about. As long as we have the picture of God looking like okay our masters that have been through the past how do we consciously see god within ourselves and therefore if we're dealing in the churches like i know there's been many a church and the picture of jesus has changed because logically and historically he couldn't look with the blonde hair, blue eyed deal. Okay, <laughs> it just can't be. No, but it's since, crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's part of our insanity. It's right? there. It's almost like I know you may remember, like I do, with good times when uh, Florida had they had the black Jesus, That's right. and it was like, no, 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 I can't accept that. You know. So That's how psyched out we are. Yeah. So if we're talking about one of the most strongest institutions that we have that can help to build that. Christ energy inside our children, but yet when they look at the Christ energy, it doesn't look, look like them. How do we well to help our people to continue to teach, to help our people understand that that is on the other side of crazy, and that now the upside of and it's a very important point you make the upside of it, that most black churches in America have gotten rid of the blonde hair, blue okay. eyed Jesus. Okay. Does not exist in basically the black church. There's been a new Bible, the African American version. I have that. Yes. Like Hank Fell, which all of the images in that Bible are black. And you yes, see Jesus are. on the cross is black. Yes. Right? Yes. So the imagery has changed. Also in that Bible are 
highlights of where Africans are referred to and spoke of and spoke. So we see our place in the Bible. Okay. So, yes, Eurocentric people, white folks, have colonized the image of God. And unfortunately, we will not free our minds mm -hmm. until we free ourselves of a white God. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's just the cold hard truth. You're right. Now, that's easy to say, extraordinarily difficult to do. You got 400 years of that. Yeah. Right? You've got 1215 generations of that. Yeah. Right? So that's a tall order. So it, uh, I consider that to be what I call an intergenerational issue. Okay. It's not going to be solved on our watch. Okay. We, 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 we ain't going to live to be We're that. We're not going to see that? Right? No, no, no. But what we will do is we will set the table. We will frame it properly. We will leave writings and speeches and talks mm. and books that speak to that. Right? And then we will pass the baton because they will run the next leg in this marathon okay right got it's not it. a relay race it's right? a marathon it's not a 400 meter it's long right no this is long so we have to be committed to that we can't give up on that and when your young people say oh I, you know won't you leave that alone won't you stop no no that is at the foundation of what ultimately will set our minds free and once we set our minds free we're on the path to real freedom. And this is why I brought up yesterday understanding the difference between African-centered thinking and Eurocentric thinking. Mm -hmm. African-centric worldview and Eurocentric worldview. You see, we're going to have to deal with these folks. There's no way around. Oh, yeah. Right? No, okay. We're gonna, right, right. So if you're going to have to deal with them, you need to understand them. You need to understand how they think. You need to understand their worldview. You need to understand their cosmology. You need to understand their ethos. So in dealing with them, you can understand what's important to them. Mm -hmm. You know what's important to you. Yes. And you can flex and bend right you're trying to make a deal well if you're sitting down trying to make a deal with an average average eurocentric person and you start bringing god and the holy spirit well, they, they 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 ain't feeling that that's not who no, they that are. ain't what they're dealing <laughs> right? with right that's not what they're dealing with mm -mm. So, you, so you 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 you're you're writing your deal you're framing your deal um from from a serving perspective but the way you talk to them about it is right mm -hmm. um, money, mm -hmm. money, profit. Yes. Right. But but a but a fair profit. Right. You talk to them about honesty. You talk to them about integrity. You talk to them about what earns people's trust. These are all things that we know and feel. And 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 that's what's what's in it for them, of course, is the profit. That's what they're looking for. Right. Yeah, they, they want the profit. They want the money. And and when and not the, that we don't want the money. No, I right, right. you know. But we want the money our way. We don't want the money their way. Right. Right. As you know, one of their uh, Eurocentric thinking is a simple frame survival of the fittest what does that mean i'm stronger than you therefore i will trash walk over around beat you down to get what i want right yeah that's how they think we don't think that way we understand that life is about divine laws that life is about connectedness commerce right Right, and certainly life is about commerce, but there's a way that you do that with integrity. Yes. All right. So these are lessons that have to be taught. Now, this is easy to say, extraordinarily difficult to do or to undo. Extraordinarily difficult. It will take 
people ask me all the time, Dr. Prince, how long do you think it will take for us to close the, the, the gap. income and wealth gap between With us and them? Oh, about 100 years. Three to five generations. Yeah, that's a right? long time. That's a long time, but we have to have patience. And what we do know that everything that God has created is either growing or dying. It's changing, right? There's no in-between. You grow or you die, right? So our thinking, hopefully, is growing with the proper instruction from the proper models, the proper coaches, the proper mentors, the proper people in your life. That's why I said yesterday, um, Introduce me to your five closest friends, and that will tell me who you are. Yes, that's as they know, and as they go, so go you. Don't spend major time with minor people. People going nowhere want you to go nowhere with them. People doing nothing want you to. And do if you have those minor people, get some new. Bless them and release them. <laughs> I tell you, I could talk to you for eternity. Continue. I just, you know. You've given me some real realities. You know, I, in my heart, want to see us rise financially because of that $1.7 trillion that needs to come back into our community. The fact that people who are, because I get it all the time from my um, associates that look different than I do, that say that, well, you've people have arrived. You've got, you know, people who have a lot of money. I said, yeah, but if you look even at who their partners are, it will not be coming back into our community. That's just the truth. So, including wedlock, by the way. That's right. That's right. So There's more interracial marriages today than ever before. And, and the commercials are out there. We don't even get a chance to... I, yeah, in fact, in commercials, I mean, I was commenting uh, uh, on that with my wife of 50 years. Mm -hmm. You hardly even see white people in commercials. It's, it's I mean, you got, you got <laughs> blacks, Hispanic, yep. Asian, yep. gay, everybody. <laughs> It's all mixed <laughs> up now. As my mom There's used to call it, the, to that the world of no nations. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's amazing. So it shows some progress, but we still have to monitor that as well. Which be but nothing will replace good and righteous teaching, right? We cannot expect them to do that for us they are not it is not in their best interest no like you said it's going to be up right. to us it's if it's to, to be it's so, up to we that's right that's, that's right. it no no question about it so i i accept the challenge i have for the last 50 years uh, i'm doing what i can i hope i'm modeling behavior that woke and conscious brothers and sisters will model and then over time you and I, as I said earlier, we won't see it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? We made our mark. We put our thumbprint on it. Okay. We preached uh, repeatedly what is right. Right? And the rest will take care of itself. Okay. Well, that's some hope. <laughs> I just have to be reincarnated so I can come back. That's and right. <laughs> when you love to come back. I have said that to my wife. I want to come back and see, let's say 50 years or 75 years, what progress we have made. What did, where did we go? What did it happen? Yeah, and I yeah. believe, I know it's going to happen. Yeah. I, I keep, uh, I was at the uh, African Leadership Awards and I was blessed to receive an award there and I closed out by saying is, is that you know, the old adage is, is that together the ants ate the elephant. I said, but the real deal is, is that together the ants conquered the elephant. There you go. There's a beautiful African proverb. You've heard it before. I use it all the time. When spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. There you go. That's all a right. powerful one. So I have had the joy and the honor and the privilege to be able to speak and show you all what Mr. D Doctor, Dr. George Frazier has to offer. Now, he also has, just while this conference is going on, the opportunity for you to even get more information. It will be in, I forgot what month it's going uh, August the 2nd through the 5th in Houston, Texas. If you want more information, just go to powernetworkingconference.com. That's powernetworkingconference.com. 
to offer, uh, include an adult in the suit. And uh, keep it. This is where the movers and shakers and decision makers, those brothers and sisters who are woke and conscious, this is where we meet, have this kind of discussion. It is a training. It's not a bunch of folks speaking by. We are training our people. And that's what we do. So definitely. If we want to make a difference, we've got to come out. We have to support. We have to learn. Teaching is important. And then once you've learned, you have to internalize it. Don't just externalize it and say, I went. Internalize it and then act. So, again, thank you so much. I appreciate Great you. Great questions <laughs> and an incredible audience. Love you. Keep you in God's work. Will do. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we are Access Wealth Nation with Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse giving you your financial checkup from the neck up. You have got an opportunity to hear from one of our great griots, our kings, our information and growth that we can get. We have have to still maintain our elders where we're going to learn. And so since I've taken on that level of elder myself, I'm handing you this information also. So again, this is Access Wealth Nation with Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse at the Resurgence 2022. Be who we are, become great, and rise. Be back again in a few minutes with some more interviews. Peace out. She was told that she couldn't play with the boys. She was told that they were too big, too rough, too strong. She was told to give up her dreams and move on. She was told to just be pretty, be quiet, be a lady. She was told that women had to stay on their side of the court. Stay in your lane. Playing and competing with men was insane. She was told that men and women would never be equal. Dreaming like that would only be linked to your mind and your soul. She never listened. She knew that their thinking was old. She is magic. She is the definition of spirit. She is what champions are made of. She is magic. We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creative. We are here.